हेलो फ्रेंड्स ये वीडियो शुरू करने से पहले मैं आप लोगों को कुछ विजुअल सिखाना चाहूँगा आईटी मंडी के और उसके बाद हम इंटरव्यू शुरू करेंगे हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल व्यूवर्स सो लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस प्रोफेसर वेंकट कृष्णन इज एन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर एट आईआईटी मंडी ही इज आल्सो होल्डिंग द पोजीशन ऑफ डीन स्पॉन्सर्ड रिसर्च एंड इंडस्ट्रियल कंसल्टेंसी इन एडिशन टू द डीन इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस इन दिस इंटरव्यू सीरीज विद वेरियस प्रोफेसर्स एंड साइंटिस्ट वर्किंग इन द एरिया ऑफ वेरियस रिसर्च प्रॉब्लम्स थ्रू आउट द वर्ल्ड आई एम स्टार्टिंग दिस सीरीज विद प्रोफेसर वेंकट कृष्णन i thank you professor venkat krishnan for agreeing to this interview and i'll be asking uh, several personal questions to uh, professor krishnan in addition to the various scientific questions so let's start uh, with the, the questions uh, i welcome professor krishnan once again professor krishnan yeah uh, th thank thank you very much uh, dr ashish babuna thanks for your kind uh, invitation and also the introduction this is the first time i am giving such a virtual interview let's Welcome see how it goes my first question uh, is tell us something about your academic and especially the phd and postdoc journey that's an quite an easy question to start with uh, that's so I, I i did my uh, bachelor's uh, bsc in applied sciences from phd college of technology it's a quite a well known institution in the city of coimbatore in tamil nadu india and then i did my msc in material science again from the same college uh, in tamil nadu subsequently i um, uh, went abroad for a phd degree so i did my phd uh, in in the field of physical chemistry from the university of stuttgart in germany and graduated in the year 2006 and subsequently i did a postdoctoral research for a period of 4 years at the university of pennsylvania which is an ivy league institution in usa I followed by another 2 years stint as a research associate uh, in chemistry at the national institute for material science in tsukuba japan and uh, it's an academic journey so i really enjoyed this journey especially coming from a varied background because my bsc was in applied sciences where i studied several subjects uh, uh, and then my msc was more focused on the material science so again this uh, from a very um, broad curriculum in the bsc applied sciences to a very narrow curriculum in msc and subsequently i did my phd in uh, physical chemistry the, the nature of my phd work was more uh, into the type of materials and uh, especially it's on the spectroscopic analysis of the materials where we studied the local structure of the materials using uh, x ray absorption fine structure spectroscopy and raman spectroscopy so it's again more related to the materials chemistry and subsequently i did my post doctoral research uh, at the university of pennsylvania again this was also more related to the studying different type of materials and here it was more related to the bio materials yeah, using um, x ray spectroscopy and uh, x ray diffraction and grazing incidence uh, um, uh, studies of the um, uh, langmuir monolayers so again it's all drone based uh, x ray science so this was also more in that direction and subsequently my uh, research associate chip at uh, japan that was on supramolecular chemistry so there i did a lot of chemistry related works so, uh, but the overall journey was very nice and i thoroughly enjoyed uh, the academic journey and now i am in a different phase of life so the main thing was the it was a great experience to come do the studies at different countries wherein i could learn not only the chemistry and the research part of it but also the culture of the different countries so i uh, re really cherish my memories of this academic journey yeah uh, starting from my undergraduation till current uh, position here at iit Mumbai. thank you professor krishnan for this uh, the detailed uh, discussion on your journey and or uh, sharing your Uh, experience of different phase of your academic journey from masters to phd to postdoc and then joining uh, after joining iit mandi also so 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 i think our viewers will be very happy to hear about the nature of your academic journey which is completely interdisciplinary in nature and i think the, uh, people will get inspired with this journey because most of the time we see that people are more focused on the core areas of of the research work and the academic journey they don't want to go beyond the uh, their streamlining uh, 
uh, of the academic research of particular areas so uh, i feel from your journey and 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 after uh, getting the position at a, a reputed institute of india uh, people will be or especially the student will be highly motivated motivated to do the inter interdisciplinary research so thank you very much professor krishnan for uh, sharing your nice journey uh, to all the viewers now i'll move to our next question uh, to professor krishnan so when you uh, just shared about your uh, journey of from research to academia the so my next question is following your uh, the first question is how difficult it was transitioning from postdoc to a faculty position at an iit yeah that's that was indeed uh, quite difficult and uh, many of my other so um, share similar uh, experiences so it was not a that tough us very smooth journey uh, transitioning from a postdoc and especially for postdoc from abroad for a person with um, phd degree also from abroad so it was quite difficult so some of the difficulties were um, uh, since i studied in a, um, in a college for my bsc and msc so it was kind of a, although the college is quite good and reputed but it is more of a locally known uh, institution so i i didn't have much of a research experience or uh, contact with the leading academic institutions in india so as, uh, as per se that I, i didn't have anyone as a godfather or someone who can who i can look up to to get some advice or get some suggestions in india so that was so one uh, one thing which was quite difficult because i was kind of like an completely an outsider with um, 10 years of experience abroad and applying for some faculty positions back in india so i was uh, i started applying for a faculty positions in the year 2010 it took me uh, close to 2 years before i could uh, finally land up in a faculty position here at iit mandi so the journey was quite long and it was quite difficult because especially i was kind of uh, it's an outsider and added to the difficulty was the, um, my mixed academic background although the interdisciplinary research and interdisciplinarity is quite well known and it's considered quite good but obviously when it co comes for the faculty selections at uh, different academic institutions sometimes this mixed background could create some difficulty i wouldn't say that it's uh, for all the institutions because several of the institutions also value very high this interdisciplinarity in the academic background and the research but some of the traditional institutions they make specifically look for certain faculty members with the core um, area of expertise uh, so at uh, one of the other iits where i applied so i applied uh, interestingly to two departments one is the department of chemistry another is the department of uh, material science and uh, engineering or materials and metallurgical uh, engineering so at the chemistry department uh, my application was rejected it was not even shortlisted but through um, some uh, insider information i just got to know that uh, i neither my bachelor's nor my master's degree was in chemistry so i am kind of uh, not eligible to um, be a faculty member in that chemistry department because they wanted the faculty to teach some core chemistry areas so i, I can completely understand okay that's that's fine and on the other hand in the materials and metallurgical uh, engineering department they said that okay you have a, a nice background you have an msc in material science but subsequent to that msc we want to have uh, see an engineering degree so if you had an msc followed by a mtech degree in something like my mtech in materials uh, engineering or mtech in materials technology some degree or in the field of engineering with prior to your phd that to to uh, get in in that department so if you come from a typical science background and this is ours is an engineering department again uh, you seem to be a misfit or do not match so that kind of um, let a little bit of a difficulty because when uh, this and several of the other um, uh, institutions uh, uh, good institutions did not even shortlist me maybe for whatever reasons that i don't know but um, whatever happened to no, um, has happened and uh, let's assume that whatever happened is has happened for a good reason and it's for good so um, finally uh, i ended up here at iit mandi and i, I just want to tell uh, another thing about my very first visit to iit mandi so i came to india um, in in end of march 2011 following that uh, huge earthquake that happened in japan so i i came on kind of a leave because my family was quite concerned that uh, about my survival in japan so i came on um, uh, relatively a long leave long leave of about one month back in india and my first visit to iit mandi was in april 2011 so it was more of a self invited visit to give a uh, talk uh, 
So I uh, contacted the director and director forwarded to a faculty Prohit and he arranged for a talk uh, here at IIT Mandi. And the first time I traveled, I felt that, oh, okay, it's quite far away. So I flew from Coimbatore to Delhi in a, a time period of about three hours with the, the flight time. And then from Delhi to Mandi, it took almost the entire overnight. It took about 12 hours. I thought, oh, okay, it's quite far away. Okay, but anyway, that time I thought, okay, it's a good experience. I'll uh, uh, come here, give a talk. So it happened that way. And subsequently, my application was um, shortlisted and I was called for an interview here at IIT Mandi. The interview happened in September 2012. And I, you know, since I was quite uh, desperate to get a India, so I thought I'll better attempt the interviews whenever I get a chance to attempt the interview. So I came, came to uh, in India in person and I gave my interview here at IIT Mandi in uh, September uh, 2012. It happened, uh, sorry, September 2011, it happened. and. Uh, that time also I felt that the journey was a bit too long. But nevertheless, I thought, okay, attending an interview gives a very good experience. So I attended the in interview. I didn't feel like uh, whether I will get selected or not. I just attended it as a neutral candidate uh, without um, not, not much of a backing, uh, backing and all. And uh, interestingly, I got uh, um, the uh, faculty offer here, which I was not ex expecting. And um, although at, uh, after the interview, when I went back, I felt that, oh, it's too far a place and it's much, much far from my hometown, whether I would be able to join or not. But nevertheless, now I joined, I joined here in uh, April 2012, I joined, joined and now I have a very long term association with IIT Mandi. And incidentally, I met my spouse here at IIT Mandi. Now we are married and settled here for more than seven years. So uh, thank you very much, Professor Krishnan, for sharing your interesting uh, journey, or you can say journey leading from uh, struggle to the uh, finally joining as a faculty at IIT. As you uh, discussed in your, uh, when you sh shared your journey for, from transitioning from uh, a, a postdoc to a faculty position, you also told about that you considered yourself an outsider because you spent uh, around 10 years in, uh, in abroad and and subsequently, you also shared that uh, because of the, there are some pros and cons of not having the, the core academic degrees to the uh, different departments you were applying, whether it is the, the basic sciences department or it was an engineering uh, department. Uh, there were some issues uh, somewhere uh, regarding the core subject degrees and somewhere you, you also discussed about the godfather uh, having a godfather in india how important uh, it is having a godfather uh, anyway we uh, listen to this godfather word uh, everywhere in any industry whether it is academia or whether it is a film industry or whether it is any other industry how important this godfather word is to to get through uh, any uh, institution in india yeah, that's that's a good good question uh, um yeah the, uh, first and foremost, I want to clarify that having a godfather uh, or someone to help out is not a bad idea because that person can give uh, guidance, that person can uh, kind of uh, uh, do a little bit and also that person can introduce uh, their uh, subsequent students to the, their net network. So as, as we all know that nowadays networking is almost like uh, everything. So first so I would like to clarify that the having a godfather is definitely not a bad idea. If you have someone, you can consider yourself lucky. If you don't have a gum, you may need to um, struggle and... I think the connection is lost. Uh, I will try to reconnect Professor Krishnan. Uh, hello? hello, sir. Uh, yeah. I think the, the connection was lost. So I think we are... Uh, yeah. uh, we have resumed now the connection. So you were dis uh, discussing about the having or not having a godfather how important it is yeah. in uh, academia nowadays in india and i will uh, add one another uh, question to this in because uh, okay. uh, it is related I, I think, to, uh, I think related I to the, in something and could i complete or uh, yeah actually this question is related that. to the, the the discussion you are you are continuing so the uh, one mm. question, one thing is godfather and other thing is the recommendation because uh, we see both things, uh, should we think uh, both uh, this, the worlds are different or uh, both worlds have similarity? Godfather or the recommendation from a big professor? Mm -hmm. 
yeah god godfather is kind of more of a colloquial t- term where we, we, we just use it to someone who is supporting and it may or may not be viewed in a positive context and obviously recommendation letters on the other hand we just need not just one but multiple recommendation letters because the, the different institutions they see the recommendation letters and they will even make some comparisons between the different recommendation letters and that gives a kind of an idea about the goodness of the person or kind of about the character of the person and after serving here at iit mandi for more than um, 8 years and also chairing shortlisting chem- committee in chemistry the last year so um, uh, i am now con- quite convinced about the, the nature of the selections which are done uh, here at I- iits so it's not an individual person or it's not uh, someone who has a very big godfather can easily get through so the committee selection committee and all, uh, and prior to the selection committee the shortlisting committee they do a very thorough scrutiny of the applications and have a closer look at the credentials of the applicants and then see whether the profiles are matching with the requirements and subsequently there is an external selection committee which kind of evaluates the candidates so it's a kind of a very detailed process so um, uh, one or two persons in the committee cannot kind of uh, uh, tend to have a imbalance in the um, uh, committee or tilt the pants so it's a it's a very detailed and thorough process and i have quite uh, high confidence in the system so um, it's it's a it's a really a difficult process at the same time uh, it's a, uh, i wouldn't say complete full proof but it is not easy to tamper the um, uh, process and the tamper the system so thank you very much professor uh, for giving this uh, nice uh, idea about the how this uh, uh, selections are done at iit mandi for or or any other iits for the faculty position so now we will move to our next question so how was your experience after joining iit mandi which was just a 3 years old iit then in 2012 yeah so i i joined iit mandi on uh, april 11th 2012 when it was hardly a 3 year institute uh, as you mentioned and it's a very small institution with a very uh, few faculty members and few staff members uh, so it's like uh, we are joining as very small family as a newborn kid so my experience was like that and also the then director professor timothy gonsalves uh, we call him in short as uh, tag he was very supportive and was very much a big source of inspiration to all of us who were, were joining and who were present at that time so it was a great feeling to be a part of a young institution and to see it grow from the scratch was a gun to narrate an anecdote so i joined on april 11th 2012 and on april 13 2012 was the ground breaking ceremony of this command campus so i was a very new faculty a two day old faculty being invited to participate in the ground breaking ceremony and from that time it was quite interesting to see that okay um, institution building right from the ground ground breaking to the current level and also perhaps by the time of my retirement in 2044 so it would be a much much bigger level institution so we have an op- very good opportunity to see it grow right from the scratch to the best of the best le- le- levels yeah. and uh, i was also one of the first faculty members to shift to this permanent campus in command previously the transit campus was in mandi town and uh, where there was a, it was run in the Vallabh Government College uh, campus in Mandi. It's a small, uh, uh, small space, and obviously, being an IIT, it has to have a much bigger uh, space. So, so we, I was one of the first faculties to shift here to this new campus, and also, coincidentally, I was made the first warden of the hostels in the command. And, um, and la- later, I felt that. Um, uh, Uh, no, no one was willing to take that job and eventually it came to me was hardly a 3 month old faculty so since july 2012 i took over as the first warden of the hostels in command and interestingly this was a um, very interesting thing that um, i i have no um, experience of staying in a hostel because the college where i studied and my hometown were exactly the same so i used to be a day scholar so i never had the experience of how it would be 
like to be in a hostel or to live in a hostel and during my phd we rented an uh, apartment along with a few few other phd scholars and i lived lived over there so i never had an experience uh, of living in hostel and obviously i was still uh, kind of trying to balance myself with the fourth cultural shock of coming back to india after staying abroad for a period of about 10 years so there were too many things which was uh, going on and then i, I told uh, the then director that uh, i have no experience of living in a hostel and uh, are you sure you want to appoint me as the warden of this hostel he said then you are the best person to take the lead and be the warden of the hostel so that's the confidence he had uh, on a newly joined faculty who he has seen only 3 months uh, in the campus and that to not that many in but nevertheless i strongly appreciate the support confidence and the motivation he has given to the uh, faculty members and eventually it it was a bit of a bumpy ride being in a new place being in a new campus with not many facilities but nevertheless i learned a lot by taking over that initial responsibility which was very small but till date i feel that uh, that's the most difficult uh, responsibility that i have held here at iit true so uh, thank you professor once again for uh, uh, nicely uh, describing your uh, story about joining iit mandi which was then, a, then uh, it only 3 years old I, iit although uh, in past 8 years you have seen a lot of changes as you just mentioned that from starting from ground breaking to to the well established campus uh, now uh, at iit mandi you have seen all the phases of uh, struggle as a faculty also as a as now since uh, institution is more than 10 years uh, old now and with with almost uh, equipped with all facilities necessary for the research and 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 the infrastructure available for the students so now the institution is uh, is in quite well placed uh, and uh, growing day by day so now i will go to the next question to professor krishnan Uh, as i just uh, discussed that the, you have seen the growth of iit mandi in last 8 years uh, uh, after your joining to iit mandi how did you see iit mandi in uh, 2012 and how do you see today yeah the iit mandi has grown leaps and bounds in the last 8 years of my tenure here and it's still uh, in the growing phase for any institution this growth is uh, natural and it uh, keeps growing even the old iits which we call as established iits still they are growing, uh, growing in some way or the uh, um, other so in the case of iit mandi just like a um, newborn child so the newborn child grows very fast till a certain age so similarly the iit mandi in the past 8 years has grown uh, quite a um, uh, big institution and uh, it's uh, it's a very very good thing that we are able to be physically present and participate and see it growing and also to contribute to to its growth so there is a lot to say about uh, the the growth of iit mandi from various different angles uh, like establishment of the research facilities establishment of a research culture and the curriculum and also the um, development of the student activities like the hostels gym khana and also with regard to the sponsor project the international collaborations so there are multifaceted angles wherein the iit mandi has seen a substantial growth as uh, um, mentioned in the motto of iit mandi which is the scaling the heights which is our motto so it's it's grown in leaps and bounds in all, almost all the different areas but i would suggest that in some other um, uh, interview you can uh, uh, request uh, professor uh, tag to Yeah, give an interview to you wherein he can better illustrate the growth of the institute because he has a complete perspective of the uh, institute so maybe he could uh, bit better tell, tell it but in my view i can see the growth in from all different ag, um, angles and in all different facets yes yes uh, thank you professor uh, as uh, you just mentioned that you uh, there are uh, there have been lot of uh, Uh, the development in the field of academia and research at iit mandi in last 10 years so there are uh, there are two unique features about the iit mandi curriculum especially the undergraduate curriculum you uh, at iit mandi there are uh, two uh, unique things one is the five week induction program and the second one is reverse engineering for the the, the btech students so can you uh, briefly discuss about these uh, uh, two innovative programs Uh, about for the undergraduate uh, students at iit mandi 
uh, um, in, in, in fact, there are uh, given more than these two innovative programs. The, so um, uh, the five week induction program, it's mainly for the B-Tech students who are new, newly joining. So it's a five, five week of a complete immersion wherein they are, uh, there's not much of academics which are being taught there, but they are taught the soft skills where I, I use uh, to be also a faculty to teach the soft skills, the human value, English language, uh, they are being taught. They are also being um, uh, engaged in some sports activities and also even the arts and crafts. And uh, so go, this five weeks is completely non-academic, wherein they are may able to, um, the students are able to realize what are their hidden talents. Maybe they are a good artist, which they themselves may not know. But whereas when they are given an opportunity to perform, they are able to perform and they are able to do a very good job. Or they could be very good at sports, but due to the JE coaching and other things, so they may not be uh, playing the sports that well. But once again, when they are given an opportunity, their hidden talents could come out. And once they realize that they have this talent, especially at the age of around 17, 18, they could even take up this talent to a much better level and uh, come, uh, keep engaging them in practicing more and more so that they could shine in the, uh, go with those talents as well in addition to the normal academic life so this five week induction it's a very good program although it's a bit stretched for a duration of five weeks but the students can tell that they thoroughly enjoy the program and let us see that uh, what is the effect of this five week program maybe in their late later part of their lives so that's one very interesting curriculum which uh, um, IIT Mandi has. In fact, this was uh, started with IIT Gandhi Nagar, if I'm right. And then subsequently, this has been adopted by several of the IITs, including IIT Mandi. And apart from this five week induction, we also have this uh, design practicum programs. So as I may rightly mentioned, we have this reverse engineering where the students uh, are given some articles like a old laptop or a old mobile phone. Now open it up, uh, examine what are the components inside, how they are assembled and arranged, and how uh, how to put them back. Uh, so it's just trying to understand um, what each of these components are made of and also to see how this could be put together back. So that's a very interesting uh, thing in which the BTEC first year students uh, do. And in the second year of this design practicum, there is also this prototype development, mm -hmm. wherein the students first need to come up with a list of 100 things they, that bug them like uh, right from uh, very simple, simple things like uh, internet of things, how to operate with a fan uh, using my mobile phone, how to operate a light using the mobile phone, to even more com complicated things are given uh, trying to find a solution to some of the uh, pro problems related to the waste management or uh, energy conservation. And then during that four months period, they also have to, uh, at the end of the four months period, they have to come up with a prototype, a working prototype, wherein they, uh, which they can use to show to see how the problem is being solved using that prototype. So that's a very interesting um, thing. And in the third year of BTEC, they have this ISTP, this uh, interactive show, show technical practicum, wherein um, uh, the students need to go out to the field, meet people from the society and uh, interact with them, try to understand the problem and also to come up with some solutions. It's more of a um, uh, critical uh, thing where wherein the prototype is not a mandatory thing, but this gives them an idea to connect with the society. And also on the higher plane, the society and how they could be a solution provider to, to the society. And just to mention, I, I, I was uh, one of the coordinators of I, uh, this ISTP, Interactive Socio-Technical Practicum for a period of three years. And then um, I was I also um, kind of contributed a lot towards the development of the curriculum of this uh, interactive socio technical practicum. And this is a very good course, or it's a great, wonderful co course to to be here in the curriculum. And the fourth year of BTEC, they have this option to do this um, uh, major technical project, wherein they could focus on some one of their major problems, especially related to their field of specialization and they could work on that and uh, develop something uh, uh, much higher than a prototype which can either be commercialized or put to for practical applications so that's one thing that they do so IIT Mandi has several unique such uh, uh, things uh, curriculum so that that will be really a good thing thank you professor uh, for uh, sharing these uh, details of the different uh, unique curriculum of IIT Mandi Moving on to our next question, uh, 
tell us something about your research work okay <laughs> good so our our research group uh, here at iit mandi works in the area of uh, heterogeneous catalysis mainly um, uh, in photocatalysis and thermocatalysis and uh, the applications are targeted towards energy and environmental applications so we kind of um, um, divide into six things so one is um, uh, photocatalytic hydrogen evolution which is an energy application another is photocatalytic environmental remediation in the for the pollutants abatement which is for the innovation and in addition to that uh, in the recent years we have started working on uh, uh, biomass conversion to valuable products so wherein we develop catalyst which can effectively convert the biomass into uh, certain valuable pro products and now we are also um, working on catalyst for green organic synthesis and for uh, co2 reduction which is also one of the major environmental uh, problem and on the other hand we also work on developing bio inspired scaffolds for dip catalysis and we perform also in some in situ studies of catalysts in action so these are the different uh, six different themes uh, our group is uh, working on but all the themes are kind of uh, uh, well connected with the, each other and everything is connected with developing um, uh, nanostructured catalyst uh, nanostructured heterogeneous catalyst for energy and environmental applications so this is the broad, broad uh, view of our uh, research work so professor when uh, you mentioned that uh, you are working in the area of catalysis especially the heterogeneous catalysis and as we see that the importance of catalysis in various industries and most important in the energy sector such as petroleum uh, most of the, uh, the, the the catalyst used in the uh, in the petroleum industry are, are the heterogeneous catalyst catalyst uh, whether uh, we talk about the, the geolites or whether we talk about the biometallic catalyst and so on so uh, the one thing i i observed uh, i worked uh, in india as a phd student and now i'm working in israel as a postdoctoral student so as a postdoc uh, uh, now uh, i see the research culture here in israel they not only focus on the developing uh, various uh, research ideas but they also uh, take them to the, the to the industry and 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 actually observe the the real life application of various uh, research done at the institutions so uh, i want to ask as a, as a as a professor at iit uh, one of the uh, leading institution in india how this uh, culture of taking research from lab to industry will actually happen in india and how much yeah, time will it take to, uh, to to reach this level uh, where the other leading countries are right now yeah um, um it's happening but uh, not at the pace uh, in which it should happen and also not at the um, level where the other countries are um, having a tie between uh, tie up between the academia and the industry since i did my uh, research uh, works predominantly abroad in germany japan and usa there i could see there is a very strong connection between the academia and the industry and also um, uh, the uh, faculties are invited to be on the board of the industry it's like a honorary board of directors or honorary members and they are kind of uh, called for um, a lot of presentations and all so there things were much more from uh, there's a formal structure and there is a much more intertwining uh, between the academia and industry and in india it's slowly happening whereas it's happening at a um, uh, very slow pace and also at a very uh, um, uh, slightly lower level compared to the other, other countries this is my point of view it has to be built up um, the momentum has to be built up and also the ties have to be a bit more stronger and in order to make this tie stronger in my view i feel that uh, there should be a trust that has to be built from both the ends yeah I, the industry uh, I also feel do not that. have much trust uh, or the academia do not have much trust then the relationship may not be strong enough to forge yeah i, I, so I, I also feel that uh, there is a gap between academy academia and industry uh, in india and i hope uh, this trust to grow and and we see uh, some good innovation happening in near future moving on to our uh, our next question i think the interview is going uh, 
a little bit longer but anyway uh, we'll go to the uh, the next question so what are the opportunities provided to the researcher at iit mandi uh, iit mandi uh, uh, specifically for researchers uh, uh, i hope uh, it also will cover as, students uh, as right well now, uh, yeah. we have already discussed about some unique programs for the, uh, the undergraduate students so in this particular question i am focusing on uh, on the researchers researchers yeah yeah so the some, some of the facilities provided at I, iit mandi are one is um, for the researchers also there is a lot, lot of like flexibility of the curriculum for example even as a researcher as a phd student uh, or as an uh, msc student getting involved in research uh, so they have to can take some co certain courses uh, in order to uh, fulfill their course work requirement so there uh, a lot of flexibility is being provided to the um, uh, researchers wherein they could choose courses of their choice like for example a, a, a phd in chemistry can take a course in humanities and credit it and then uh, um, uh, fulfill their course requirements similarly even for the msc students uh, there is a lot of flexibility given in their um, choice of courses so they could take courses from outside the discipline as well for example uh, a chemistry student taking courses in the, not only in the related disciplines like physics or biology but they could also take uh, courses in computer science and also in mathematics so varied disciplines they can take so this is one thing flexibility in the curriculum and the choice of courses it's one thing which is very good um, here at iit mandi and apart from that the msc students here are also given an opportunity to work on a research problem right from the very first semester so wherein their research culture is being built and there is a lot of emphasis which are given on um, the research based projects basically when they come out or they graduate with an msc degree from uh, iit mandi they are research ready they they know how to operate many of the instruments how to interpret the data from uh, many of the different techniques that they use for the characterization so they are kind of research ready which is a very good good thing and another opportunity i would say um, provided by iit mandi is the quick and uh, easy accessibility to sophisticated instruments so um, uh, we have a lot of sophisticated instruments and these sophisticated instruments are uh, majorly or exclusively located in certain centers like uh, advanced material center uh, research center the amrc the biox center and the c4 fed uh, d fed center so these uh, research equipments or sophisticated equipments are located there and we have a very clear open policy for booking the instrument and also to get a slot and do it so one is it's a easy accessibility very clear policy and also quick accessibility because unlike uh, very big old iits where the queue is very long we have a relatively a short queue so if you want to do an nmr within one hour you can uh, get a slot or you just uh, take your sample uh, go to the nmr room and give it directly for the um, uh, measurements and if you need a slot on xps or scm or tem within a week of your booking you will get a slot uh, provided the instrument is in working condition obviously so it's a very good thing that it's an easy and quick accessibility to the sophisticated instruments and in addition that the scholars of iit mandi are also provided with an opportunity to learn the operations of the instruments so periodically there are training programs which are arranged wherein the students are being taught how to use the equipment properly and what are the protocols which needs to be followed they are given a clear sop the standard operational protocols how to use the equipment so they can touch the instrument and use it on 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 their own so this gives a lot more learning and unlike um, submitting a sample to an operator and then the operator does the measurements in um, on a different day when in, in that in your absence and gives you the data that doesn't happen here so you can learn uh, you in the sense the research scholars can learn how to operate the instruments do the uh, instrument operation by themselves and if not they use it occasionally they could go to the uh, lab sit with the operator and tell the operator what am i may, um, looking for in the sample and how the data is being collected so there is a lot of um, good learning that happens and in addition we have a very good library here at iit mandi and the learning environment is also very nice in addition to the very beautiful scenic location where the institution is located 
yeah these are the different opportunities provided to the researchers at IIT. so th thank you professor uh, for uh, sharing these uh, uh, different details about the opportunities provided to researcher at iit mandi uh, my another question is also related to this uh, providing opportunities uh, the, the in students uh, the researchers uh, specifically uh, uh, generally visit the various conferences in india and abroad uh, periodically during their tenure of, uh, of the PhD degree. What kind of financial support uh, to the researcher is provided at IIT Mandi? Yeah, IIT Mandi also gives a lot of opportunity for the researchers to participate actively in uh, uh, research meetings, conferences, workshops, seminars, uh, both within India and also abroad. For every research scholar is provided with an opportunity to take part in two national conferences which are fully sponsored by the institute and in addition uh, student can also visit abroad uh, for a conference country or any country of their in interest where a good conference in their field of research is happening and that conference visit is also fully funded from the institute side obviously there are certain procedures and some justifications and uh, uh, some things needs to be written it's a, it's a formal procedure of application but uh, all the research scholars are provided this funding opportunity to participate in national and international conferences. In addition, if they want to attend more than one international conference, they can uh, at attend the, uh, the institute to all um, norms, provide the uh, um, options and they can fetch funding from uh, SERB and other funding sources and they could uh, kind of attend more, more conferences as well. So you mean to say that the, the, the one international conference is uh, the fully funded by institute uh, to the research scholars and if they want to attend uh, any additional international conference, uh, they can get funding from the other uh, uh, various funding sources that SERB and other sources. And uh, as you told that uh, there are two uh, the, the conferences uh, every year they can attend in India. So, so these yes. are uh, these uh, are very uh, good. Uh, we can say that the financial help will be very good financial help for the student. Uh, at least they can attend. We can say that the throughout duration of their uh, five-year tenure, if we consider PhD as a five-year tenure, so they they are funded ten national conference in India, fully supported by institute. So, so uh, I think this information yes. will be very uh, helpful to the uh, to the various researchers watching this video. Moving on to our next question. What are the opportunities provided to the researcher at IIT Mandi that I have already uh, asked uh, to Professor? Now my next questions uh, will be, what are your suggestions to the students who are aspiring to become a future researcher? Yeah, that's a very good question. Like um, future researcher. So for, first and foremost, um, uh, any individual who want to be a researcher need to seriously think whether they really want to be a researcher or they have something else in their mind and they did not able to succeed in that uh, goal so they come to research like if they want to be a civil servant and uh, they want to appear for some upsc examination or some other examination and since uh, they could not clear that exam and they are coming to uh, uh, research so that should not be the case so one needs to have a very clear idea of what a person wants uh, in life what like uh, in our childhood many times we are being asked a question what do you want to become when you become um, um, uh, grow grow older or uh, 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 what job would you like to um, do at different points of time the answers from the kids would be different but beyond a certain point of time the kids might um, have a one clear thinking for example in my case i always wanted to be a teacher I didn't specify whether it's going to be a school teacher or a college teacher or in an IIT or a university, but somehow it uh, occurred to me that I want to be a teacher. So exactly um, uh, like that, uh, every person may need to see and think what they want in life. If they decide that they want to be a researcher, then obviously research is their cup of tea and they could um, uh, come to research. So that's one thing. And also when you want to be a researcher, think, um, why do you want to be a researcher? What makes you feel interested in research? Do you really want to uncover something um, new or uh, you want to develop some new and innovative knowledge or what do you want to do by doing research? So one should have certain clear thought process 
the thought process can be uh, can evolve over a period of time and some things whatever you have decided uh, maybe from uh, 10 years ago might change uh, over a period of time but the core thread should remain the same that you are interested in research and you want to do this in research or you want to achieve this in research and uh, uh, my main suggestion and advice to the future uh, researchers uh, or any future um, job seekers or uh, young people would be focus on what excites you and just do that. If you are uh, interested in sports, focus for your full attention on sports and be the master of that particular uh, sport. If you like to research, be a researcher and devote full and full energy towards what you want to do and do what excites you so that you don't need to really being forced to do something but it, the, your internal motivation gives you a push to do those things that's my suggestion uh, and my, my another question is related to the, uh, the, the this this last question that i just you mentioned that uh, if you want to become a researcher then think about the research do not think about research that you wanted to pursue some other goals and you were not succeeded in that and, and then you came to research. So my question is related to this. In our Indian society, uh, there is a general perception that the parents want their their uh, their kids either to become a doctor or, or an engineer. I, I hardly see anyone uh, or a school student uh, thinking about I want to become a scientist or I want to become a teacher. So how uh, you see this scenario, uh, how it will change in our society? I hope and wish that the scenario changes. Uh, in many a times, uh, um, it so happens that uh, the parents force their unfulfilled uh, desires on because they feel that, okay, whether they, uh, they like or not, they ended up in a certain profession and they feel that, okay, this profession, the whatever profession they, they are in, they may or may not like and they feel that okay this is my kid i know what is good for my kid obviously the parents is right from the food habits where they know that okay i want to feed my kid only with uh, this particular um, ingredients of the food and not those uh, other ingredients so they kind of uh, do a lot of conditioning onto their uh, kids which uh, may be from a uh, overprotective point of view because uh, um, now I'm also a father, so I, I know the other side of the story as well. We cannot leave the kid to eat and uh, do whatever they want. So we kind of restrict uh, with, a, uh, um, with a lot of things, right from the food to what books they uh, read to what uh, TV programs they watch. So we do, as a parent, we do a lot, lot of conditioning on to the kids. But this conditioning at certain point may need to stop and the individuality of the kid or uh, the children should grow so that's very important and many times the parents fail to realize that's the reason they are kind of forcing their kids to become either doctors or engineers or uh, um, uh, some ias officers or what whatsoever the um, they they think that uh, that has a very good scope and their kids life would be uh, smooth and good so that's that's nothing wrong from the parents side but they should also realize that whether the their children uh, are interested in that uh, line of uh, activity or not. So yes, this have, situation could change, from, but I don't know how and when. We, we yeah. have seen from a lot of uh, examples that many uh, students who uh, who did uh, their uh, degree in engineering and turned uh, turned into a a magician, turned into a start startup comedian, into musician or. Uh, uh, some of the engineer pursue the, the management programs after uh, completing their uh, engineering degree and many even the, the, the doctors who, who did their MBBS turned into civil servants. So, so it, it, it feels like the, the, the and many of them even have shared their journey that they want their parents wanted to uh, wanted them to become a doctor or engineer that's why they pursued uh, that degree otherwise they were not interested in their degree. They, uh, uh, got this, uh, you can say that uh, their personal wish was to become something else, not the, those the uh, degrees which were uh, a kind of forced by their parents on the uh, on the children. So uh, these are the uh, various kind of things that ultimately the the student realized uh, their passion when they reached to their uh, final year of degree, and some of the even student get 
uh, actually know about their passion when they complete one degree and they are pursuing something else. So these are the uh, different uh, part of the, the stories. Moving on to our next question. IIT Mandi is one of the new and second generation IIT. What makes it different from the old IITs? in terms of research environment yeah iit mandi is one of the second generation iits and it's quite different compared to the um, other first generation iits and several of the second generation iits so one of the major difference is that we do not have any academic departments mandi uh, and we just have four schools which are kind of on the to the boundary between the schools are very diffuse and uh, soft boundaries and there are um, several interactions which are happening um, between the different schools. So this is something which is very um, good that makes IIT Mandi different from the uh, other, I, other IITs, especially the old, older ones. Uh, and the academic culture here at IIT Mandi is uh, uh, very different. Uh, like uh, it emphasizes a lot on interdisciplinary and cross-disciplinary research and interactions. So I still remember that when um, uh, we joined a new, as new faculties here at IIT Mandi, that uh, two, two faculties were um, given one office. So we have to share our office with one other faculty. And in most of the cases, the uh, other faculty with whom we will be sharing office is from a different background. So for example, a chemistry faculty sharing an office with a mechanical engineering faculty, a chemistry faculty sharing office with the humanities faculty. So there are different type of um, uh, you know, faculties who are put together to share one office. This is mainly to promote uh, cross-disciplinary interactions. And the, this uh, type of cross-disciplinary interactions can kind of lead to uh, growth of a new area of research and can lead, lead to something completely new. So th this is something which is very ap appreciable and IIT Mandi was uh, quite successful in um, having this uh, cross-disciplinary interactions. And now as a dean for the sponsored research, I could see that there are several research projects which are being handled by faculties from different schools. Uh, the same um, project has PI from one school, co-PIs from the other school, and also some collaborators from a different school. So it kind of covers a uh, you know, wide spectrum of um, uh, the areas of specialization and the disciplines. And in addition, the IIT Mandi also has certain uh, research centers and these research centers mainly come act as a, uh, one of the source for the centralized uh, facilities where there is no individual ownership on the different instruments uh, which are available as a part of these uh, research centers. So um, unlike many other institutions, it's much easier to have access. And also there is not someone who is permanently sitting on top of some instrument and dictating the terms or the policies. It's, uh, um, it's a very um, open and centralized uh, uh, thing. There is no monopolization of the facilities. So these are certain uh, uh, good things here about IIT Mandi. Uh, thank you very much, Professor, for sharing these, uh, especially the, the information regarding the, the centralization of the research facilities. As uh, I have many friends from the other IITs and different uh, old institutions of, 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 of research in India. So most of the people uh, complain about this uh, monopolization of the, the instrumentation uh, facilities. So I think uh, the, in the developing India and in this uh, second generation IITs, I think these all the hurdles are, are, are quite well taken care uh, to, uh, to, uh, to get the smooth access to various uh, research facilities. So now we'll move to our uh, next question. What is your role as a Dean at IIT Mandi? And how does it feel to become Dean of an IIT at a young age of 40s? Okay, <laughs> that's, that's a um, interesting question. Uh, first and foremost, I am not interested in administration but I am just dragged into administration. I just prefer to be a silent researcher doing my research at one corner of the institute. But somehow right from the start when I joined here at IIT Mundi, I was brought in, into administration and I was given different roles as I previously mentioned about, uh, I was the first warden of a hostel uh, in the permanent uh, campus at Command. 
wherein I myself never stayed in a hostel. So it was completely a new responsibility, which was given on me. Uh, and then somehow I managed, learned and did something. And then the, uh, once I felt like, okay, now I can handle this. Then I was immediately um, shift, shifted and I was given another responsibility to be the uh, coordinator of this advanced material research center, which is one of the first uh, um, the sophisticated instrumentation facility uh, center, which was established here at IIT Mundi. Again, that was another um, interesting thing that uh, as a warden, I was predominantly handling with the students. And I thought, okay, now I learned the trick, or, uh, trick of the trade of how to handle with the students. But then I was given this responsibility. Now here I have to handle with the uh, research scholars who are the users of the instruments, the faculties who are um, uh, the faculty in charge of the instruments. And also on the other hand, the vendors who will supply the instruments, the instrument engineers. So that gave an opportunity to interact with a much broader and wider spectrum, which was also a very interesting role, but um, I was not expecting it. But uh, since it was given, my problem is I have some difficulty to say no. So if this was given, okay, let me give it a try. And if I perform too badly, they will anyway throw me out of the uh, position soon. So I, I, did, I didn't uh, feel that, okay, I should give them this chance, but nevertheless, I will do that to the best of my abilities. So I took over that as a MRC coordinator and I um, served the, in that post for close to four and a half years, uh, which is quite a long, long period of time. And many of this open and uh, were established during that time. Obviously, with the uh, strong cooperation and support of all my colleagues uh, and also the um, uh, uh, staffs who are working in that facility. So with, without uh, the strong support of the, um, the participating people, not, uh, uh, the person in the chair cannot achieve anything. So yeah. I had a lot of support uh, from all these people and things were went on quite smooth. And subsequently, I was given a new position, which is the Associate Dean for Research, wherein again, I had to deal with the research scholars, but from a different point of view. And also to for, with this involved the formulation of several policies and um, uh, making certain things in a more structured way, so in a systematic way, and also to interact with the examiners abroad. So that kind of connected me to the outside world. Like I, I, I have to send emails to the external examiners, both from India and abroad. And unlike other institutions, there is no staff who will assist me to do the sending. I do, did it myself. I replied to all these emails myself. But that kind of built, a, gave me an opportunity to build a good net, network. And also I was quite happy with the way um, I, well, by interacting with the research scholars and I also made certain policies, especially the guide change policies, because if certain which is I, I think that was one of the most important and I could think of it as one of the significant contributions. So previously the guide change policies there didn't exist a policy, but during my tenure we formed a research scholar grievance redressal committee in order to facilitate the guide change process and we smoothened this process. Because if the guide and the scholar are not in good agreement with each other, then why to kind of continue that forceful marriage or forced uh, relationship? So things should be made much smoother and then uh, things should uh, go in a very nice and smooth way so that the both parties happily part ways and uh, move ahead in their respective careers rather than building grudges and uh, having stained relationship, continued stained relationship for a long time. So this was one of the things which I felt that that was a good contribution in, in that post. So that was uh, fine. And subsequently in September, just before I turned uh, for 40, I was given this um, deanship so to be the dean of the sponsored research, industrial consultancy and international relations here at uh, IIT Mundi. So this was also a very um, a big and interesting post. And now I'm one year down the lane and in that one year, uh, there was this Corona pandemic and more than six months was uh, not much activities had taken place. So let's see how this goes. And one thing I learned was um, uh, uh, how to move from one position to the other. So I was all the time being transplanted from dif different sections. The hostel wardenship, which comes under the student section, 
to the uh, um, AMRC coordinator, which comes under the academic section, and then to the associate dean research, which also under the academic section. And now I moved into the sponsored research, industrial consultancy, and international relations, which is another different domain. So, um, so it's uh, we have to adapt ourselves to the new position, learn the rules, and then see how to. Um, do it uh, in the best interest of the ad uh, community, the community that we serve. If as the AD research, I was serving the research scholars. Now as the dean sponsored research, I'm serving mostly the faculties with their uh, research proposals and their industrial consultancy assignments and so on. So if we just follow the norms on the policies closely. And if a policy doesn't exist, we need to take effort and uh, bring people in, come in, uh, into confidence and create a policy. That's something which is very important. And also, where, where whatever post uh, one serves, one should see that um, what changes can be made, the, which are po po positive changes, and try to examine to make some immutable positive changes, which will be remembered for a long time and uh, which will be beneficial for the community that we serve. Excellent. So, Professor, uh, since uh, you were holding uh, various positions, uh, various administrative positions, and still you are holding uh, the, uh, the position of the Dean Sponsored Research and Industrial Consultancy. So, uh, there is a rumor about you that you are, uh, you are a very polite and soft spoken person, but you are a strict administrator. How do you see this uh, rumor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't consider it as a rumor. It's true. The, 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 you, the, the, it's, it's true. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm a pol polite person. No, no. But at the same time, I'm a quite a strict administrator. Because in administration, one has to be strict, uh, with, especially with the, the rules and norms. At the same time, we need to have the flexibility, but the flexibility should not be kind of an undue flexibility or a um, flexibility to kind of favor someone. So um, one should be very bit, not bit, one should be quite strict in the way the administration works. So, so um, it's it's a difficult balance, but uh, somehow I, I kind of learned the tricks of the trade. So I can say a polite no. So that, that's that's the that's, easiest that's very the, important uh, thing. Uh, when you are working in, a, in an organization. So saying no is very difficult task, and uh, I'll say that uh, it's a, a good thing in your nature that you can say a soft no. So moving on to our uh, next question, as a dean, uh, sponsored research and industrial consultancy, as well as a dean of international affairs, what is your vision for research at IIT Mandi? Yeah, uh, IIT Mandi is already going on a very good track. It should continue to move further and um, uh, proceed further. And we are only a catalyst uh, for a short duration of time. So my uh, ten tenure will be for another uh, a year or a two, and then subsequently things would move, move on. So um, uh, I, uh, so during our tenure, what we can do, that's what we can see. We, uh, and IIT Mandi needs to promote its uh, research widely and also publicize the good work being done. So being in a, located in a remote location here, uh, kind of which is aloof from the hustle and bustle of the uh, cities. So, but we are doing a lot of substantially good research and this has to be publicized uh, in a very good way. So that's one thing which IIT Mandi will need to take care of, uh, take it a bit more seriously. Um, and also IIT Mandi could fetch a good number of uh, externally sponsored projects, including several from industry. We're already talking about some industry connect. Uh, so if IIT Mandi could fetch a good number of industry sponsored projects, that would be really um, a very good thing for the Institute as well as for the uh, IIT Mandi faculties and the research scholars, uh, everyone. And um, our Institute should also build a um, good rapport with the other academic institutions and industries. So which we are on in the process of uh, de developing and this should uh, accelerate. So we are uh, kind of working out several MOUs with uh, different, uh, other like-minded academic in India and abroad and also with certain industries. So this hopefully will take IIT Mandi to the next level 
uh, because research is not done it's done in collaboration and with collaborative research a lot of things can move faster and uh, we uh, can move with a lot of confidence because one cannot be an expert in all the domains so we need to seek the expertise of the real experts who have expertise uh, in a particular domain and then we could uh, make use of that expertise and we can all move to together and move for, forward so in that way iit mandi should uh, um, do more collaboration and also ensure the patients on the mous are really working not only on papers but also in reality these things should work and um, uh, in the international relations for a front uh, iit mandi could develop and sustain um, good international relations with several other like minded institutions abroad like uh, such as we already have a very strong working mou with the tu9 institution so several other international mous have been signed in the recent uh, past so we could make utilization of these international mous as well and have more of exchange visits for both faculty students and as well as the staffs in order to learn the best practices uh, either ways from the other country to india and also to india to the other country so more of such exchange uh, visits both for shorter and longer duration will be of uh, significant importance and these are some of the um, uh, have for our binary of sponsored research industrial consultancy and international relations thank you professor as uh, i i have seen that uh, there are various sp sponsored and consultancy project running in iit mandi which are funded by several eminent organization uh, such as isro intel corporation of usa and uh, baba atomic research center and etc uh, several others also how do you see these various consultancy projects have contributed to the uh, research development of iit mandi yeah so most of the things which you mentioned are externally sponsored projects not directly consultancy projects but um, uh, this have significantly con contributed because the for example uh, this isro projects uh, they have a particular problem and they want to outsource that problem to the experts who are available here at iit mandi and this problem could be worked out in a much nicer way based on the expertise of the faculty member and also based on the facilities uh, available at iit mandi and also the easy accessibility of the facilities so it's kind of a win win situation so many of these projects are um, happening in a win win situation wherein the, the lot of things are happening in a very fast pace by using the ex expertise that uh, both the places because the isro or the other funding agency have a very clearly defined problem for example one of the problem which uh, our group is working on is the development of a cmp slurry the chem chemical mechanical polishing slurry so the slurry are currently being imported from abroad countries like japan and usa so this project uh, deals with the indigenization of a certain cmp slurry and this indigenization efforts are being um, done here at iit mandi wherein our research scholars along with a group of faculty members having um, expertise in the domain of physical chemistry and material science they are working very closely and we are kind of very close to matching all the parameters of our indigenously developed slurry with the commercial slurry so this is a very good development and this is a very good win win situation both for the um, uh, industry like uh, this scl mohali and also for uh, iit mandi scl mohali is a isro subsidiary industry yeah okay so it's a good situation and things are moving on very positively thank you very much so our next question is uh, iit mandi has made a good progress particularly in the field of material research how do you see this achievement yeah i would see this as one of the landmark achievement uh, here at iit mandi so several faculty members are working in the field of material research have published their uh, works in highly uh, um, reputed journals and have also contributed significantly to several industrially relevant projects as i was mentioning about this uh, project from scl mohali so the material research is a very unique theme on, on uh, which is taken uh, a lot of uh, precedence and significance here at uh, iit mandi thanks to the um, range of sophisticated instruments which are available for materials characterization here at iit mandi 
and this uh, good work should continue with the same or the term in the future and i am sure that it will um, con continue and in the next 5 to 10 years i anticipate that iit mandi should have developed at least one technology if not more technologies that could be commercialized and could be put to practical use for, for example this indigenous cmp slurry i'm sure that this would become one of the commercialized and uh, technology for practical use and similar to that there could be many other technologies which could be taken for a practical use so uh, i this will grow and i am quite confident about it so i i think uh, uh, advanced material research center uh, at iit mandi and the recently established uh, the center for uh, uh, fabrication of electronic devices as well as the uh, the energy centers i think these uh, will be a landmark in the uh, research uh, development at iit mandi and i wish you all the best and uh, and uh, wish all the best to the research scholars working at iit mandi so i think the interview has become quite technical and and maybe uh, may look uh, you know little monotonous to the uh, many viewers so to get a lighter mode uh, now we will switch to some of your uh, uh, the personal journey and the personal experience so i'll ask now some personal question to you i hope that the viewer get the, the some good uh, responses so my first question uh, to you is what are your hobbies and interests yeah <laughs> i would rather say what where <laughs> because nowadays i am quite occupied with uh, so much of um, administration and uh, research so uh, my general hobbies which i still maintain are reading books i like to read a lot of books especially um, biographies and autobiographies so um, i i read a lot <laughs> And apart from that, my other interest is in linguistics. I like learning new languages and also practicing um, the speech and the grammar of the different languages. So I am um, quite impressed with the uh, Sanskrit grammar. So I have learned Panini to a certain extent. And I also, uh, being from Tamil Nadu, I studied uh, Tamil quite, um, quite a lot. And I am quite fond of the Tamil grammar as well. And English grammar as as many of the people who interact with me very well know that I'm quite particular with the um, grammar, especially the punctuation, the articles, and so so on. And, uh, so I like uh, linguistics and learning languages, and I know six languages. And hopefully, uh, uh, before I die, I'll try to learn another four, at least four more languages, so I can kind of make the count to a double-digit number in ten. Let's see how it goes. And and earlier i used to play, yeah <laughs> thank you thank you very much i used to play the game of chess long ago but not much nowadays uh, maybe i don't get a companion to play or nowadays we don't need a companion we can also play it in with the computer so chess is one of my favorite games which i play and my current interest is playing with my three-year-old daughter that's oh, that's very nice that's very cute so, Professor, uh, my next question to you is, uh, what would be your career choice if not a professor or a scientist? Yeah, this, this is uh, quite a hard question, as I never thought of any other profession other than being a teacher. Right from my childhood, I always um, envisioned myself as a teacher, not necessarily as a professor um, at an IIT, but more as a teacher and either as a school teacher or a college teacher but now i'm here again in the same profession as a teacher but here at an iit uh, so other than teaching i never thought of any other profession so yeah. thank you for uh, giving the uh, answer for this question uh, our next question uh, to you is who are your inspiration among uh, renowned indian and uh, indian and world scientists in the in Again, this is also a quite a, um, a difficult question because uh, there are many people who have inspired. As I said, I li like to learn, uh, I like to read biographies and autobiographies. I have read uh, several of uh, these and several people have uh, influenced and they inspired me. So some noteworthy one is among the Indian scientists, obviously it's uh, APJ Abdul Kalam who has uh, inspired a lot. Yeah. Since the time I read his book, Wings of Fire, this I read it during my MSc days, even before he became the president of India. So he's one of the big well-known personality from India who has influenced uh, and inspired me. 
apart from that in the field of chemistry i am uh, quite inspired by the works of linus pauling and also uh, professor ahmed zivail who also won a nobel prize for the uh, developing the concepts of femtochemistry and there are many other chemists uh, uh, inspired me a lot and the living inspiration i have in my life is my own phd advisor professor helmut petan only he's really a gem of a person and uh, i attribute almost uh, everything of my you know, career to to him the way he handles people the way he interacts with his research scholars and the way he advises them is simply great no one can replace him in that re- regard um, he's now about 75 years old he was born in 1943 so he's one of my greatest uh, inspiration in life very nice so, professor so uh, my next question to you is uh, what are the places you ever dream to visit but could not visit yet yeah <laughs> i i have visited uh, so many places uh, especially many places in abroad because uh, the, usually the uh, time of stay in abroad as supposed to occur as a phd scholar is rather short so we tend to visit uh, may, many places to see the places explore the things so i have visited several places in abroad and within india i haven't uh, visited many, many places uh, except for a few which i visit um, along with my research scholars for attending conferences and uh, having some academic uh, act- activity like being a phd uh, thesis examiner or so so on so mm, not not much go uh, places i end of dream to visit but not go but just to mm, uh, make one thing um, uh, clear is that i really want to visit um, um, taj mahal in agra because once i was tra- na- traveling to visit the niagara falls in usa when i was uh, staying in usa and that time i met couple of people um, yeah, um, uh, uh, american uh, people in the bus they said oh you guys are from india i, w- I was with uh, um, some of my friends over there oh you guys are from india oh india has uh, very interesting monuments like taj mahal and qutub minar and they were telling so many things maybe they was visited in india sometime recently but uh, me and my friends were kind of looking at each other interestingly none of us had visited taj mahal <laughs> and uh, even till date i have not visited taj mahal so that's something uh, a place which i would like to visit sometime and also i am interested to visit andaman and nicobar islands that is also another nice destination which i plan to visit uh, and also someday i would like to visit israel perhaps yeah. if you are there then yeah. i could uh, meet and say hi, hello to you in israel yeah. someday that that's a uh, very uh, good option i'll say that but i'm not sure that how long i'll be here that when you come here that time that till the time i'm here uh, working in israel so uh, moving to on to next question how you describe yourself as a person yeah i'll describe with your own words um, like soft spoken and polite yeah that's that's true Uh, and somewhat unpredictable because uh, in many cases some people have said that oh okay we never realized that you would uh, take such a decision now especially when i turned down some of their requests and all uh, so some, somewhat unpredictable but so that, determined that, and not uh, sorry to interrupt professor that may be the administrative yeah. uh, decision you might have taken i am uh, apart from the as an administrator i am asking uh, how you see yourself as a person as a person i am um, uh, i'm uh, i'm polite and calm but at the same time quite determined and also quite a well organized person yeah so i think uh, the interview has already been uh, so long so uh, once up, once again i thank uh, professor krishnan uh, for agreeing to this online interview and this was the first interview in uh, the series of interviews with uh, various uh, scientists and professors working in india and abroad at this note we will end this interview and hope to see you uh, with some other interview of other eminent personality in the field of research thank you very much all yeah thank you thank you very much ashish yeah